Hello and welcome to Science Families. My name is Colleen Lamott and I am both a sixth grade and an eighth grade science teacher here at Einstein Middle School. And I must let you know that I absolutely love my job. I think I am the luckiest person in the world that I get to work with your students every day and go on a learning journey with them as we discover complex ideas that are found in the world around us. So while I teach both sixth and eighth grade science, because I believe that all students are capable science learners who are best at driving their own learning, I have designed both of the courses in a similar way. And for, the, uh, for this video, I'm gonna be showing our sixth grade Canvas page. However, please know that if you have a child in eighth grade, that our Canvas page looks as very similar. So the first thing I wanna show you is if I go into student view, it looks a little bit different. In student view, your child will see that we have our home page, and then we have our week at a glance. These are the different activities that we're doing in class for the week. And if there is one place and one place only that your child goes, it should be to modules. All of our learning is nested within our Canvas modules. And specifically, every unit that we do in science, and there are five to six depending on the course, every unit that we do in science has a big overarching question. And you can think of this big overarching question as a full and complete puzzle. The puzzle must be assembled piece by piece. Likewise, in science, each of our units is broken down into pieces or sections. Each section then has an essential question that after the course of the section materials are completed, students will gain the knowledge and insight to be able to answer the essential question, which then in turn becomes a piece of the puzzle that over time will make a complete picture. So each section is broken down so that there are some things that we do as a whole class, but for the most part, in order to create an individualized education plan for all students in my classes, uh, students get to choose both the rate at which they learn, certain activities that they participate in, how they show what they know, and who they work with. For example, in sixth grade, we're gonna be starting section three, and we're also starting section three in unit one for eighth grade. There are different units. In this case, for sixth grade, we are working in about sound, and in eighth grade, we're working on collisions and forces. So notice that each section is divided into a must do, can do, and then there will be um, a summary of learning. So within the must do sections, students are given the date that they must complete a variety of topics and activities. And every single section begins with our essential question. So again, that question that we need to answer in order to put our puzzle piece, um, or rather to, to get our puzzle piece. And then I go over specifically what students should be able to do when answering this question by the end of the section. And then I give students some tips about what they can do to best drive their own learning. Students then continue to work through each of the activities and notice that they have the option for how they are going to record and store their information. So students are encouraged to find the best method for them. So some of us like to write things down on paper. Some of us like to process and talk through our thinking, um, in which case we might want to record our thinking. Some of us do better keeping our files organized digitally. Whatever it is that's best for your student, they get to explore and find out what that is. And they get to choose the methods that, that is best for them. So lots of choice there. And by the way, make sure to ask your student, what is the method that you're using to track your learning in science? 
they will continue to go through this list of must do activities. And again, this is either for sixth grade or eighth grade. I just happen to be in the sixth grade Canvas course right now. Um, and then they go into the can do, and this looks like a choice board. So they get to think about what interests them most that they wanna explore and learn more about and in what format. So we've got some things about hearing loss, uh, visible seeing of sound waves, um, how our brains work to allow us to hear and process information. This is a really fantastic podcast about how um, there's this movement to have one square space of silence. Um, some of our students are really interested in math and want to see the connections between the math and the science. And then there's also this phenomenal uh, FET simulation. So um, students are just encouraged to choose one of these activities to complete so that they can round out their understanding. And again, while this is specific to section three in the sixth grade Canvas course, this is the same format that you will find in the sixth grade and eighth grade courses. At the end of the section, we come together as a science circle and students share their thinking and we create a public record and that is used as a tool to bring all of our learning forward. And then finally, students submit um, an independent assessment or an independent assignment rather that summarizes their learning. And right now it says it's 16 points. That's something I actually have to change. But that concludes the modules piece. And what I want to say then is that once we have completed then all of these puzzle pieces, we've gathered all of our puzzle pieces, your students will be asked to actually put those pieces together and create a complete story. So our units in science really follow a storyline. And once they have all that information, they assimilate it and they are then able to answer a transfer task or answer a question that's gone beyond what we've specifically talked about in science. And that's because they are learning big ideas that make sense within the broader context of science, not just a bunch of random discrete pieces of information. So it's truly exceptional to watch your students and be a part of their journey as they learn and gain independence and confidence in their ability to think and act like scientists. As for grades, everything is revisable. Uh, I believe that grading should reflect what students know and understand and are able to do all of our language around assessment is based on um, an asset-based approach. So what is it that your students can do? Um, there isn't language around what they cannot do because I think that takes away from the safety of our learning community. So we all know that some of us learn some things faster than others. Some of us need more repetition. Depends on the day, depends on the topic, depends on a bunch of factors. So your student's grade is going to reflect what they know and are able to do at the end of the unit. And so therefore you'll see lots of assignments in Canvas that um, aren't actually worth any points. So that's just a way of communicating that your student is doing work, that things are going well in science, um, and you can look forward to seeing their actual grade, which is um, basically a, a level of proficiency at the end of the unit. Okay, I think that does it. I love to send out videos. Um, I'll try to send out videos frequently to update you about with what is going on in class. Please always ask your student what they are learning, what question, what puzzle piece they're trying to figure out, and just allow them to share with you the wonder of science. Reach out anytime and bye for now.